Hello, ladies and gents. Um, welcome to quick podcast. What I'm going to be looking at today is a bit more detailed statement of financial position. So what we're going to do basically is go over the absolute basics as to what you need to know. And we'll have a look at how to construct one. And then we've got a couple of worksheets for you to do, uh, doing either the bits that are difficult. So in the first one, and then the second one, you're just going to have one complete, one to complete. So pretty straightforward. All right, first up then, let's have a look at the absolute basics. The absolute basics. Okay, first of all, look at the title. Okay, you'll have the name of a sole trader of the company, and it's now the statement of financial position at, and it's at because it's at a particular date. The whole of what used to be called the balance sheet, now the statement of financial position, shows you what assets a business has got, what capital, and what liabilities a business has got at a particular date. And that compares to the income statement because the income statement looks at information for the whole year. And what the income statement then is working out the difference or the, the amount of profit that you've made during the course of the whole year. So an income statement type will always have income statement for the year ended 31st December 2015. And that means then that it was a, it's an historic document and it started a year earlier, so on the 1st of January and it finished on the 31st of December. Right, going through the basics, okay, if you look at old textbooks, that means textbooks in some cases anything up to two years old, um, it would have been called a balance sheet and it would have looked very different. And what we've got now, and I'll just put a little line across here so that we know where it sort of splits into two. It's going to split into two here. Okay, top half is all to do with assets. Bottom half is to do with capital and liabilities. So if we think back to the accounting equation, the way that this is laid out, you've got your assets equal capital plus liabilities. And if you think about dead click and how these are laid out in the trial balance, your assets are your debit entries, your capital and your liabilities are your credit entries. Okay, top parts, always going to be non-current assets, so you've got to remember to put them first, like expect them in an exam. And in my, this case, we've only got two, and I've put the two, I've used two columns, I've put the two in that column, and the total is 30,000. You've then got your current assets. I've been set them on purpose here, just so that you don't get confused when you're adding up strings of numbers. Okay, you could, in theory, have put them into the right-hand column. However, I haven't done that because otherwise what somebody's going to do in an exam, I think, is you will add them all up and then you'll add up the total of your current assets and get too big a figure. So I've got four current assets and that's inventory, trade receivables, bank and cash. And I've put them in order and put a total in the right-hand column. And that's so you don't get confused with the adding up. And then I add the two totals up to get my total assets. Just a note on the current assets, what we've got them here is in order of liquidity. And that's a normal way that you'll see them written. In an exam, you'll actually normally, for most boards, get away with writing them in a different order. But it's a good idea to try and remember them in a fixed order anyway. So inventory goes first because for most businesses, the inventory gets converted to trade receivables, which then get converted to either money as cash or a check for the bank. So it takes longer, if you like, for inventory to become money because it's going to become a trade receivable. Bottom half, the bottom part of the bottom half, where we're looking at just the, the liabilities, well, that's quite straightforward, really. Um, you've got, in this case, you've got two non-current liabilities, you've got a loan and a mortgage. And again, because there's two of them, I've offset them so I don't get confused when I'm adding everything up. And they total 27,000. And then the trade payables, because in this uh, statement of financial position, that is the only uh, current liability. I've just put that in the right-hand column because I'm not going to get confused when I'm adding up in an exam under pressure. The bit that might give you a few problems, but it's not too difficult. Those are always on the trading account. This is very, very easy by comparison, is working out the capital. And... Um, certainly most of the people I teach, I've already showed you what a capital account looks like. And this is a summary of that capital account. 
So you've got your opening balance, which would have been on the credit side. And we're going to add on to that the profit for the year that comes from the income statement. And that's the profit for the year at the bottom, not the gross profit figure that we add on. And that's going to increase the amount of capital that the owners have got in the business. So we add those two figures together. And then what we're going to do finally is subtract the drawings. In this case, it's 16,000. So 35,000 takes 16,000. My closing balance for my capital is 19,000. And then all we need to do is add the 19,000 to the 27,000 of your non current liabilities and then add it onto the current liabilities to give you your total liabilities. And what you should notice here, which is why in the old days it was called a balance sheet, is that these two figures, the total of your assets, has got to equal the total of your liabilities. So the accounting equation still works. Right, how do we do one from a trial balance? Well, it's quite easy, really. Um, we're going to put things in to the right place, basically. It's very, very simple. So for my premises, I'm going to put those in, 30,000. And I'm going to put in my maybe not that simple. And I'm going to put in my fixtures. And I'm just going to show those of you that are going to do the examples in a, in a bit a simple way then of adding up a column of numbers. And what we use, we use this little symbol over here. That's a Greek letter for sigma, and it's a sum function, and sigma is a Greek for S. So if I click on that and click on sum, and then all I need to do is highlight the numbers I want to add together, cross return, and they're added up. And I've already put those in, in the one that I'm going to do for all the other figures. All right. Current assets and order of liquidity. So inventory. Inventory will never be in the trial balance. That's because it appears in both the income statement and the statement of financial position. So it'll always be as a note. So I'm going to put 8,000 in. Trade receivables, no problem. And then normally I'd be looking for bank, but here for Luke, we've actually got a bank overdraft. So that's going to become a current liability. So we go straight onto cash on this example. Okay, and that's given me a total for my current assets of 16,000. I've used a sum function. And when I add together those numbers, again, I've used a sum function. That gives me 54,000 for my total of my assets. Looking down here now, let's go through and do this calculation. And you're going to be doing some examples of this first when you get on to doing your work. And the opening balance, well, the opening balance is going to be given in the trial balance as 24,000. Profit for the year, it can't be in the trial balance because we've had to calculate it from the income statement. So I've given you the figures profit for the year when you need them and we add those together 41,000 but then the owner's taken out some of the money that's effectively owed to the owner and it's taken out in terms of drawings so 21,000 okay it gives a closing capital figure of 20,000 so this guy is going to be have to, have to be quite careful uh, because what's happening if his capital is actually falling in the business Mortgage, you've only got one mortgage link, which is 17,000. And then I've, I'm going to offset again these figures for the bank overdraft and the trade payables, just so that I don't confuse myself when I get to do it in an exam and add together these figures and my total for my current liability, because I've got to show the total. So I'm going to put in 7,000 for the overdraft, and I'm going to put in 10,000 for the trade payable. And hopefully it works and it does work and my total liabilities equal my total assets. Questions for you to do. First of all, have a go at doing these two questions where you've got to do the uh, work out the um, capital part. And then finally, you need to do a full statement of financial position and you've got the information down here. All right guys, hopefully that's going to help. Uh, people that need to, if you're uh, being taught by me, obviously save this and share it with me so I can mark it. Otherwise, good luck.